oral intercourse does come under uh, the, 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 the gray area that the Sharia is not explicit about between the husband and wife. And, and we actually do not have a lot of quotations about oral intercourse. The reason being that uh, oral intercourse, generally speaking, was a sexual habit that was frowned upon in most Eastern uh, cultures. Uh, it is something that is not uh, you know, uh, embraced. It is uh, more of a, a Western notion. And this is actually historically true. I'm not just inventing this. Um, uh, even the, the ancient Indian book of the Kama Sutra, if you actually uh, look it up, it actually mentions this act as not being uh, between husband and wife, really. It's mentioned amongst other segments of, of uh, uh, sexuality. And the pre-Islamic Arabs actually also knew of this act and they considered it to be uh, vulgar and crude, not something that is done by uh, noble people. Oral intercourse was known to them and it was an insult and it was the highest insult. And it was an insult for a man to do this because they considered it to be uh, demeaning and vulgar. So it's very clear that, uh, you know, uh, Eastern cultures generally, and yes, Arab cultures over uh, even pre-Islam and throughout, you know, most of Islamic history that they viewed this act as not being uh, noble. But as I explained in my other video about the, uh, the what is haram in, in, in sexual actions and whatnot, nobility, does not translate into haram and halal. Something can be ignoble and it doesn't make it haram. Something can be against the purity of the fitra and it doesn't make it haram. You can say it is makru. And therefore haram and halal is not based uh, primarily upon nobility. It is based upon what Allah and His Messenger have uh, said. And therefore because of this, I understand that, uh, so by the way, you're not gonna find classical discussions in the books of fiqh about oral uh, intercourse. You will find about masturbation, you will find about anal, you will find about so many other uh, things that were known, but you will not find a detailed discussion about oral intercourse because it was not something that was common at all. Now you will find very, very few references, very few references uh, to it. And of those references is some uh, scholars did allow it. Uh, the famous Hanbali uh, scholar Al-Qadi Abu Ya'la, uh, he said that a man may uh, kiss uh, uh, the vagina of his wife before intercourse without karaha and after intercourse it is makruh. And he said the same applies for a woman that she may kiss uh, the man's organ with passion. He actually said this, that with passion she may enjoy uh, in the man's organ. Uh, and he uh, also said this is the position of Ata, uh, the Tabi'i. And um, uh, in the famous Al-Fatawa al hindiya of Hanafi Fiqh, the famous Fatawa Hindiya that was compiled, um, I believe under the Alamgir uh, time frame. Um, not 100% sorry, don't quote me on that. Uh, but in the Fatawa al hindiya uh, it says that if a man inserts his, uh, by the way, Fatawa Hindi is not that old. It's only like 200, 300 years old. So it's not one of the ancient books, but it is a relatively more modern one. It says that if a man inserts his penis into his wife's mouth, some have said this is makru, and some have said that it is not makru. So we have that reference there. And Al-Qurtubi, the famous Andalusian scholar, he uh, mentions in his tafsir that Al-Asbagh Al-Maliki, the famous earlier Maliki scholar, uh, he says uh, that he quotes from Al-Asbagh, which is one of the classical scholars of the Maliki Madhab, that it is allowed for the man, this is explicit brothers and sisters, it is allowed for the man to lick his wife's organ. Yal hasahu bilisani, it literally says to lick. So uh, we have some very few references that uh, some of our scholars considered it to be uh, permissible. At the same time, a lot of modern scholars uh, considered it to be impermissible and I can quote you like five or ten that uh, and this is generally modern fatawa as I said in earlier books it's not really discussed and they bring a number of uh, a number of, of evidences for this right so the first evidence that they bring that it is impermissible is the whole genre of verses that I already quoted in a hadith that approach women you know, uh, they are your cultivation, approach them from their health, from their field. And they say that the mouth is not an orifice of cultivation. So uh, Allah Azza wa is saying, approach them from as if they're fields, as if they're cultivation. Now, this um, is a very weak evidence because by unanimous consensus, it is allowed
allowed for a man and a woman to play together with each other's hands until ejaculation is achieved and a man may ejaculate onto the body of his wife and nobody will say it is haram and, and he will do it intentionally. It does not contradict the verse. So it's a very weak um, way to refute this. Another thing that they say that those who make it haram, they say that the mouth is a noble organ and the mouth does dhikr and the mouth recites the Quran and so we should not put uh, we should not put our private parts in it. And to respond to this, one can say that that might be a valid point that it is a noble organ, but it doesn't make it sinful. It doesn't make it haram. You can say that it is discouraged. You can say that, you know, it's not befitting, but to say it is haram is to bring Allah's sin and Allah's maybe wrath or Allah's curse or, or you know, not necessarily wrath and curse, but you're saying that it is potentially punishable. And the evidence or the notion that the mouth is noble and dhikr is done, well, okay. Uh, ghiba and namima is a worse sin than you know uh, kissing the organ of your spouse for example and it is done by the mouth so what are you going to do if somebody does ghiba we tell him you don't read the quran if somebody slanders does buhtan we're going to tell him don't do dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the two are separate things and you cannot bring uh, the notion of tahrim just because you said that, that the mouth is a noble organ the max that can be said is that it is not a noble act i can i can understand this but as i said to say something is not noble does not make it sinful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I think um, one of the strongest ways to actually uh, say that it is makru or maybe more than makru is to bring up the issue of najasa and to say that uh, potentially najasa is going to be uh, put into one's mouth. And uh, to respond to this, one could say that uh, the majority of the madhabs, actually three of the madhabs say that uh, semen is not najis. Okay, so three of the madhabs actually say that it is not uh, najis. And then uh, one can also respond that by unanimous consensus, a small amount of najasa is overlooked because you cannot you know, protect yourself. Now, what constitutes small? That is gonna be another um, uh, controversy. And still, I would say that this argument argument of najasa, uh, you know, uh, as we said, it is best to avoid najasa, but in and of itself, touching something najas or, you know, of that nature, it's not something that is going to incur Allah's sin. And if it is done for a reason, uh, it is permissible by unanimous consensus, as I g explained in the previous question, that, uh, you know, a person changes the diaper of their child and th that might be najas, or you cleanse yourself and that is najas, so you wash it off afterwards. And it might not be noble, it might not be something that is, you know, uh, dignified, but something that is undignified does not become necessarily sinful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, uh, what I would uh, conclude is that oral intimacy is something that one cannot say is sinful in the eyes of Allah, but at the same time, one should understand, frankly, that this is a habit that we are picking up because of the prevalence of it in the cultures that we live in. Not that there's anything wrong with every single habit, but this particular habit, it was not something that was common or the norm in the majority of, of um, uh, cultures and especially uh, in Muslim lands and cultures. And that is why one does not find a discussion of this in uh, the classical books. You find just a quick reference here and there. And generally speaking, we do find permissibility in some of the previous um, ulama. And I want to quote you um, uh, fatwa from uh, one of uh, uh, the, 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 the scholars who gave this uh, um, uh, reg with regards to oral intercourse. He said uh, that in conclusion, it has now become clear that oral intercourse is not prohibited, but it is not the normal choice for committed Muslims and Muslimas. Despite the fact that oral sex is not haram, it is completely disgusting and does not conform to the pure taste and the decency of a Muslim's personality, end quote. I am sympathetic to this, so it is not haram. You're not going to be sinful, but at the same time, let's try to cultivate haya and try to do that which is uh, the best. Another uh, uh, fatwa from uh, modern Hanafi Sheikh, Mufti Ibrahim Desai, uh, he writes that it is makru because the mouth is not an oracle of najis and because the the mouth is used for reciting the Quran and for doing dhikr, end quote. So, makru. I agree with this fatwa that oral intercourse is not haram, but it should be makru. And if the couple f feels that they must engage in this, they really should make sure that najasa is avoided uh, and nothing of that nature is ingested. Uh, and of course, the pre medhi or the, the pre seminal fluid is najis, so keep that point in mind. Um, and if it is done, then it should. It should not be something that, and again, I mean, the problem comes, dear brothers and sisters, that 
people have been raised in a society where certain acts have been absorbed by them. They want to do these things. And if they are told that it is not allowed, you know, within a marriage, it might actually cause problems for many of them. Sometimes uh, people convert to Islam and they are totally accustomed to a certain lifestyle. So we, we cannot give a blanket fatwa to every single couple. The default, as I have said, and this is the position I'm advocating, is that it is not haram, it is not sinful, but I'm not giving the green light. It is makru, and one should strive to one's best to uh, attain a more noble or more purified level. But if one does it, one will not be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.